Hey guys, I'm Perry Nemiroff and welcome back to Collider Best of the Week, a show for all you folks who can't watch everything we're posting on the YouTube channel or read everything we're posting on Collider.com and need it all in one nice, neat little space. But then again, if you're a big fan and watch everything, this is a great place to revisit some of the best moments and of course, some of the best screw ups as well. So we're gonna shake up the format a little bit this week and start the show with heroes. So you might know that we touched on the topic of Jeff Johns and John Berg taking taking over the DC slate of films on last week's show, but because that news dropped after Heroes taped, the panel spoke about it this week. Jeff Johns is a comic book deity, but he doesn't know step one about making films. And as Kevin Smith talked about once when he was talking about, I can't remember which one of his specials it was, but somebody asked him about directing a Green Lantern movie. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And one of the things he talked about is, you gotta understand, telling a story on a comic book page is radically effing different than telling a story on a screen. And it's totally different things. It's still committee. You know, mm, it's still right. very much a committee environment over there, a corporate environment. Whereas Kevin Feige is basically one man who is pulling those strings. With a great team around him. Yes, he has, yeah, absolutely. Mm, he has mm. a great team around him. But there's still, you've still got people, th there's really no, it needs, they need, they still need a David O. Selznick. Mm. They still need a, a, a super producer to come in there. They need like a Jerry Bruckheimer, somebody who is a real heavy hitter. I think Jeff Johns, even though he not, he might not be a big uh, a producer like uh, Kevin Feige and come from, you know. He did, by the way, used to work for Richard Donner. Yeah. Yeah. And With Kevin so. Feige. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, oh, I, I want to watch I the think, flashback movie about this. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think Jeff Johns is a, is a great writer and he's a really good producer. So I think with those skill sets, I think he'll be uh, a great producer for all these upcoming uh, feature films, more so than anyone they had already in the seat. Now let's move over to Collider Movie Talk, where the panel discussed the next phase of this post-Batman v Superman shakeup, and that is Charles Roven moving over to an executive producer role. I think people are going to see this and get all up in arms about how this is all Batman v Superman's fault, and it might not be. I, I don't want to read the tea leaves too much into, oh, that movie didn't make as much money as everybody thought it would, so now we have to do all these different shakeups and give people different titles. I do think that played a factor, but it also might just be Charles Roven, veteran producer, being like, I don't want to be hands-on with this stuff Could anymore. Be, yeah. I don't want to be the fall guy if something doesn't make a billion dollars anymore. I put in my time doing the day-to-day -day production stuff. I'm going to take a step back. Plus, you got to remember, the DC was bringing in a lot of new blood as far as production goes. I mean, look at Ben Affleck is going to be a producer on the new Batman movie. So if you're bringing in newer people who have different ideas that maybe we haven't seen before, that's a positive. The way that Batman v Superman was received, not just by critics, but by, by the public, right. not a lot of repeat viewings. It didn't make that kind of money that it should have made. Um, those have those kind of ramifications that we've been seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of shuffling, but not that, not too much. But now this is the big, the first one where sort of like they're downsizing somebody where you were executive producer on all of these. Now you're just going to be a producer on these and you're not going to be involved in these other right. future ones. So it definitely is sort of like moving people around in a way to, I don't know about delegate blame or things like that, but I think you were right by saying to leave, put room for other executive producers like Ben Affleck to come in. Now let's jump into some trailer talk. We got a new Star Trek Beyond trailer and on the show, Mark, David, and some weirdo who really likes Three Ninjas discuss the trailer. And I, like everybody else, knew that Star Trek hardcore fans were not gonna appreciate the Beastie Boys trailer is what it's come to be known now. This is the trailer for you because it shows us a lot of action, a lot of really intense outer space stuff. You get some Star Trek Wookiee villains. I thought Idris Elba was a very ominous presence in there. This thing just builds and builds and builds and you really feel it. And it has it does such a good job of highlighting each character in a way that means something and makes you think, oh, I wonder how so-and-so will fare in this situation. And one of my favorite parts in this is when Zoe Zeldana says they're boarding us. Mm -hmm. Something about the delivery of that line, it like just kind of sucks the air out of the room. Like, oh my God, they really might not make it through this. It's either a very good time to be a Star Trek fan or the worst of times. Uh, it depends <laughs> on where you fall because JJ created this new... I'll call it a new version of Star Trek, very action-oriented, action-packed, you know, exciting, intense, maybe something more for the mainstream audience, but I think a lot of the hardcore Star Trek fans miss the old slower pace, more methodical, more based on exploration, you know, to boldly go uh, where no one has gone before, and I feel like the exploration part of Star Trek has been a little bit lost with these films. So I'm hoping we get to see that because the last trailer we heard, the frontier pushes back. And we know mm -hmm. like they're going out to the frontier now. We're gonna see what's out there beyond, you know, what they would consider, I guess, the central part of the galaxy. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with that. 
In addition to the trailer, Paramount also released some new posters for Star Trek Beyond, and a certain somebody on the Movie Talk panel had really strong feelings about them. It looks like fun. These posters are fun, so it's a big buy for me. And in terms of hot colors and, you know, something that might be light, blockbuster entertainment, I think these posters do a great job of showing that. But also, personally, I just like the designs. I hate these posters. Really? They look like somebody vomited a rainbow. It's They're <laughs> garbagey. Yeah. And let me just say one thing about the middle poster. Kirk on a motorbike? Are you joking? He was on one in the first one. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. It's so stupid and annoying. It's mm. Star Trek. And you have a dude on a motorbike. What's the, what the next poster going to be like? You know, Spock in a 1970s car? It's stupid. It's Star Trek. Oh, that makes me sad that you say things like I that. I hate it. Over on Jedi Council, one of the hot topics this week was Star Wars Celebration because they just revealed the brand new key art for the event. Let's check out what the panel thought about that and also what they think is to come at the event. We knew we were going to see a lot of Rogue One stuff on any promotional material for Star Wars Celebration, but the fact that Episode Eight is also featured in this poster, it's Luke Skywalker in there. Luke Skywalker is going to be at Star Wars Celebration. Mark Hamill will be making a presentation panel at some time. Will we see footage of Episode Eight? If I had to put money on it now after seeing this poster, I would say yes. I love the image. I think it is so nostalgic feeling. You look at it and immediately it just makes you feel Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And there is so much to analyze in it. And I think for me, the definite standout are the troopers because I love seeing the short trooper in the bottom and then the death troopers, which I don't know what it is about the death troopers, but like, I love them. I love the fully blacked out suits. So I can't wait to see those actual troopers in action during the movie. This is the first promotional tool of Luke on a poster, yep. on anything. And we talked about it. Like, John, remember, we, we yeah. said that once episode eight started to be promoted, Luke is going to be on the yeah. material as he should be. Yeah. And there he is. So uh, I love this. I'm bummed, so bummed that we're not going this year to celebration because I'm, <laughs> I think so much information is going to drop. I think we're getting Rogue One stuff and episode eight news and Rebel stuff and new books and new comics. I think it's going to be a smash. And I'm very jealous of people who are going there. Does it make me a really big jerk to let you guys know now that I'm going to Star Wars Celebration after that? Maybe just a little bit, but I'm still super pumped. Being in this office, Star Wars has become a much bigger part of my life than it ever has been. So I feel really, really lucky and honored that I'm going to get to go and cover for you guys. So back to best of the week, though. Let's switch gears and go to the Junket interviews. We've got two big releases coming out this weekend, and you know what that means. Junket interviews with the cast of the film. First up, let's see what Steve spoke to Jennifer Lawrence and James McAvoy about when he was talking X-Men Apocalypse. Who ruins the most takes? Ooh, Ooh me. Yeah, Jen. I think it's me. Yeah. I couldn't get through the scene where he was using Cerebro and he said, I've never felt power like this before. <laughs> <laughs> the heavy breathing. Followed by, I've oh. never felt power oh. like this before. Oh. Yeah. I couldn't make it. I think that they had to... I had to sit out for that scene and they <laughs> digitally put me back in. I couldn't do it. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to see the new mutants and I've heard you will be a part of it. Is uh, that true? I know nothing. I know nada about the new mutants. I've talked to one actress who I think has actually signed up for it and she was telling me all about it and the, the stuff I'm meant to be doing you in it. And to I was another like, another actress? No, no Jennifer Lawrence. I never speak to other actresses without your permission. I know. I was she just wasn't kidding. as pretty as you. No, I know that it's not a real story. It she was just, just a dream you had. Appeal. Now let's move over to one of Steve's interviews for Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's with Anne Hathaway, and she spoke about what her reaction was when she first heard that they were going to make a second film. No, I don't know. I never really, I never really thought about it. I was just psyched when the script came in and it wasn't bad. You know, because it's a sequel and that you've signed a contract and so you're doing it no matter what. So I'm like, oh my God, I actually believe in this story and this is gonna be so much fun and I'm really excited to go back. Now it's time for TV Talk where the panel did an absolutely epic section of highs and lows. They tried to go through as many trailers from upfront as they possibly could and it is an incredible rapid fire discussion. Highly recommend checking out the full thing because one, it gives you a really good sense of how the shows are shaping up and it also serves as a pretty good preview for the new shows to come. But for now, let's check out a quick reel of what they discussed. I didn't like the the like the reboot rejoining of 24 when uh, with Kiefer after like the series was over. Mm. I think this reboot uh, sort of thing looks pretty awesome. Um, I, I again 24 episodes of television is a ton, so uh, I'm I'm gonna say hi. Probably not gonna watch it. 
probably will get to Every seasons. episode is a full hour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, full hour. Yeah. Uh, as somebody who did watch the original 24, I'm going to go ahead and say low when he said, I'm the only one I can trust. I was like, oh, barf. And I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. Jimmy Smith is the bad guy. I'm just assuming. I don't know anything, but <laughs> next. I'm going to go low. I was wrong in saying that I would like Rush Hour. I thought it was absolutely terrible. Lethal Weapon is one of the greatest movie franchises of all time. Uh, it should never be made into a TV show, although I like that actor from um, Rectify, mm -hmm. Sasha. Sasha agrees Dude, with me. Dude, low. Are you kidding me? What Sinead <laughs> wouldn't say is exactly what I said. When yep. we watched the trailer here, I was like, oh, turn it off. So oh, <laughs> low. First trailer, Kevin Can Wait, a.k.a. The King of Queens 2. Yeah, I'm going seriously. low. Low for me. St Sinead. I'm still going to give it a high. You are <laughs> such a sucker. No way, man. Yeah. This was a low. This proves why Super multicams low. are the, dying. It, yeah. it, it was still funny, you guys. There was still enough there, and I still laughed. So whatever. <laughs> Screw all I, whatever. Yeah. NBC's timeless shot, Sasha. Uh, this is like 11 63 meets <laughs> making <laughs> history. Serious? And this yeah. actually, I think, is a good <laughs> version of time travel. This is a show that I think I will watch. I give it a high. I'm going to go low because I don't care about time travel shows. And they go <laughs> well, to. Well, you're screwed because there's like 12 of them. Of them. <laughs> This they like year. go back. They're like, ooh, look at everything. It's 1930. <laughs> no shit, it's different. Like, ooh, what the hell? It, and they're just like, ooh, everything looks cool. Look at our cool contact. It's it's a low. I'm out. I love this trailer because I've been telling this joke and I love this joke. And we talked about it last week on the show. What do they do with superheroes blowing up everything? There's got to be insurance and justice somewhere. Hi. Whoa. I did not like the trailer. Yeah. It could be good when we see it. It's interesting that NBC, I don't think they've actually officially released it or something. Like it kind of leaked. Yeah. And I wasn't that maybe maybe they were worried. Maybe they're doing some research. I don't know what they're doing, but the trailer wasn't impressive. I love the idea though. I love the concept. Mm -hmm. So I'm going low. ABC, we've got conviction stealing away Agent Carter uh, to this uh, procedural. And again, in the trailer, they solved it. So low. Mm. Huge low, uh, like exactly what you said. They solved the entire thing. I have no interest in watching this. Yes, I do low. I want to see Haley all do something different. I'm, I'm glad the girl's working. Everybody's yeah. got to get paid. Got to keep the lights on. But I'd like to see her do something different. She's such a good actress. Yeah, but this looked terrible. Yeah. And I love Eddie Cahill, who was yeah. in Miracle. He's and now he's a silver fox. He looks hot as hell. But this looks. Bad. Yeah, uh, this this is a really great idea. I love yeah. the idea of the designated survivor because you talk about it every State of the Union address. Who's it going to be? Where are they? Da 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 da. Super great idea. High for me. Massive high. Yeah. Give me Kiefer. This premise is fantastic. This trailer is radical. I cannot wait. Yeah. Now it's time to highlight some of the written features from the folks over at Collider.com. First ones we're going to discuss are Game of Thrones pieces. So if you are not caught up with the show, I'd save those for later. If you're cool with moving on and want a little background information on the children of the forest, I'd check out Dave Trumbor's piece that gives you loads of backstory on the creatures and assesses what happens to them on the show. And of course, there was a certain reveal regarding Hodor. If you're wondering if that bit of information is book canon, check out Adam Chitwood's article on that topic. This last Game of Thrones article is especially cool. We join forces with the folks at Map Me to create an interactive map for the show, and it updates each week based on what happens on the new episode. So that makes it so much easier to track your favorite characters now that so many of them are on the move. We've also got some great pieces on The Flash, which wrapped up its second season this week. Probably goes without saying, but if you're not caught up on the show, there are spoilers in these features. The first one comes from Dave Trumbor, who gives a little history on The Black Flash and how he could affect the show moving forward. Then we've got one from Katie Burt, which lays out all the burning questions we're left with after season two while we wait for season three. We've had a lot of Star Trek on today's show already, but I want to bring your attention to one more piece about Star Trek Beyond. Steve got to go to the set of the film, and he wrote up a huge list of all the major things he learned during the visit, and it includes story details and also a little something about potential Easter eggs. We've got a long holiday weekend ahead of us, so if you're looking to hang in and relax, Dave's got a list of the best animated movies on Netflix to keep you busy. There's a pretty wide range of options here, and I'd probably go for the most awkward pairing ever, a double feature of South Park and my childhood favorite, The Land Before Time. We've also got another big list from Aubrey Page. Disney Channel has its 100th original movie coming out soon, a remake of Adventures in Babysitting, and it's gonna re-air the other 99 films to celebrate. If you're prepared to go nostalgia crazy, you could find the full schedule and check out Aubrey's feature ranking all 100 films on Collider.com. 
And now it's Schmodown time. As you probably know, Team Box Office Breakdown has broken up. JTE asked Clark to be her partner, which didn't really pan out, but Clark is still set to go up against JTE's ex-partner Finstock in the latest singles round. Now, Clark is number two because she knows her stuff. Finstock is number three because he's a good guesser. Let's check out what happened on the show. What do I think about my upcoming match with Clark Wolf? Um, I don't even know who he really is. Um, oh, she's a chick? Finstock is the luckiest son of a bitch I have ever met in my life. The fact that he's made it this far is insane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Finstock. What is he wearing? What uh, is that? There's you, a hat on I don't a beard understand. Mask, what is Christian. he doing? Right, look at him. He's stretching, he's, doing he's squats. Stretch. Look at lunges. this. It's like a yoga or something. It's very like strange. a purple. Yeah. Wow. Oh, very, very deity like. Wow. With a record of one win, no defeats. Ooh, there she yeah, is, ladies eyes. and gentlemen, here on her quest for the championship. Ladies and gentlemen, classy Clark Wolf. All right. So classy. Look at this. So ready to go. Not blinking at all. Christian, she is the definition of class. This is a clear lady versus the tramp situation. In a category of 80s films, name the three actors playing the men in Three Men and a Baby. Steve Gutenberg. Tom Selleck. Ted Danson. Correct. Wow, big round for Clark. Who said the line, a boy's best friend is his mother? A boy's best friend is his mother. Uh, you looking for the character name or are you looking for like the actor's real name? We'll accept either one. Um, Five, four. Leonardo DiCaprio. We were actually <laughs> looking for somebody you probably know well, Norman Bates. Oh, yeah. Now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show where we get to highlight a Collider Video-inspired piece of artwork. You guys probably all know how I feel about Sausage Party at this point, so it's probably going to come as no surprise that we chose a moment between Sinead and a sausage, which sounds insanely awkward, but that's why we have great memes like this one from H. Eckstein. If you'd like your meme featured on Best of the Week, all you got to do is pick a favorite moment from Collider Video, turn it into some cool artwork, and then send it in to mailbag at collider.com. Put meme in the subject line. Thing is, though, Meme of the Week is going on a break next week. Keep sending in images, but we're going to have a special segment for you, so keep an eye out for that one. You know what time it is now? It is blooper time. Get ready for a whole string of never-ending meltdowns that go on here in front of the camera like this one now. Star Wars Celebration, we're still not going. But yeah. as far as the poster goes, that, wasn't that a trick. was so mean. <laughs> I, I, but it's going to be one of the greatest endings uh, of some kind of science fiction uh -huh. zombie Dracula thing, something or other that you should see. Dude, have you guys seen Alien? Because there's a new movie coming out. Or read all the articles on Delighter. Deli wow. I don't know what I'm talking about today. Marvel made quite the impression with the recently released casting announcement for Taika Waititi's Thor. I said it again, didn't I? No. Taika Waititi? No. Taika Waititi. Yeah. Why, like, okay. Waititi. Okay, why TD? They made me like slutty business zombie, and I was in like the shortest skirt ever and high, high heels for 12 hours. Hey, Ashley? No? What? <laughs> oh, Alex and Living Hut? And the other person on this Makes panel? Sense. David Mc David McGriffin. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> David right. McGriffin. David McGriffin. And Warner Brothers is making some major changes in an effort to course correct. Hello! <laughs> Writer Nick Pizzolito, fuck, right off the bat. Pizzolito, Pizzolito. No, Pizzolato. Pizzolato. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> God, no! <laughs> no! Ash, have you ever been A, a slutty yes. business zombie, or of B, Of course, and an you do that every day, but. <laughs> Dwayne's, Dwayne's and Johnson. It's a whole other story. Like, bad, bad host. <laughs> For Taika Waititi's Thor, what? Why, why Why Waititi, why Waititi. No one's gonna read your script. 
It doesn't work that way. I'm just being dead like, honest. Chapter one, move. Right. Yeah. He's like, get out of here, kid. So, we don't want to see your face. You got a good idea. Nobody, right? Someone no, else came up with it. Get off. I'm so bummed I'm not going to be at Star Wars Celebration. I can only take solace in the fact that I'll be at the Fort Lauderdale Improv July 14th through the 17th while Star Wars Celebration is going on. Nice wow. Plug. That was good. Writer Nick Pizzolito hit it big. <laughs> Am I saying it weird? Pizzolato. Pizzolato. For more on Pizzolito's confirmed, did I say it again? Pizzolato. Uh, my dad hates my boyfriend because he's artsy and now we're engaged. Show! Walk into you that, you pop up. You will enjoy Resident Evil 6, won't you? <laughs> Careful what you name your Twitter handle, kids. It might get read on Jedi Council one day. Sarcastic old dick, right? <laughs> wow. Did I say that weird? No, I didn't know what to do with my fucking hands. His actual handle is even better. Tricky slick dick. Good <laughs> old tricky slicky dick. Marvel made quite the impression with the recently released casting announcement for Taika Waititi's <laughs> Slay, slay, blade, slay. Horse blinders, I'm a fucking professional. Okay. I am so excited about the hashtag slutty business zombie. You have no idea. And that's a wrap on Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what to do. Hit the comment section below and tell us what your favorite moments from Collider Video and Collider.com were. For Best of the Week, I am Perry Nemroff. Please catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P Nemroff. Go bookmark Collider.com and subscribe to the Collider Video's YouTube channel. We hope you watch all of our shows, but if you don't have time for it, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a good weekend, everyone. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.